right, good evening, everybody. We are live here on Soapbox Sunday. Sorry for the late start, but as usual, we will entertain uh, if you'll give us a little bit of your time this evening. I am the host, Cool C Dub One. Got my man Dan in the house, and as you can see, we got lovely Tiffany uh, joining us this evening. What up? Uh, can't wait to talk to you a little bit and uh, get some insight from you. But uh, before we get started, as usual, Dan, tell everybody who we are and how you can get in touch with us. Uh, we are Athena Protection, and you can reach us on any social media platform at Athena Protection Service, or you can give us a call on our 800 number at 800-951-4866. It's 1-800-951-4866, and this is Soapbox Sunday, where we... Uh, we get together and speak about what's on our mind. You know, we let our ideas and our feelings fly. And, you know, it's all about, you know, uplifting each other and just being informative. Absolutely. And if I didn't say today is January the 24th, man, we're almost through the, the first month of the new year. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Um, Got a little bit of snow today. I don't know if you guys seen that accident on the west side, on uh, westbound 94. I'm sorry, east side on westbound yeah. 94. Uh, looked like some not of a movie with the pile up. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, you know, first major storm of the year for the metro Detroit area. We got to be careful out there. Uh, to take it easy. We're expecting a little bit more. Uh, actually, a bigger storm coming in uh, late Monday. Tuesday. So come on, Michigan, uh, Detroiters. We are not new to this shit. Just slow down out there. I got <laughs> caught in the Safety this, uh, you know, afternoon. Dan, uh, you got the update on our COVID numbers? I do. So Share we are, everybody. we are at a total confirmed uh, cases of 548,000 in 69 cases, 14,291 people have died. And our daily cases are at 1,600. Total daily deaths are at 221. Um, I, I looked into the numbers a little bit today. And okay. a lot of these cases are, as I thought, from Oakland, Macomb, and Wayne counties. Um, the yeah, highest, Detroit. yeah, the highest population the highest cases per population is actually in Macomb County based on the number of people that they got. Um, the combined cases for the Tri-County area is uh, 199,000, almost pushing 200,000. Uh, mm -hmm. The combined deaths are at 7,200. 50% uh, of the deaths from COVID in Michigan come from the Tri-County area. And 25% of those deaths are in Wayne County. Wow. wow. Now, based on population, the infection rate is about four, four to between four and five percent per county. Uh, death rate is three point six percent for the tri county area, just to give people some perspective on what the uh, virus is doing and the rate of death that is killing people at three point six is high. Um, wow. That is high. So Indoor dining will reopen on February the 1st. Uh, that order goes into effect um, and it'll last for three weeks until Sunday, February the 21st, at which time they'll review everything, see how the opening went and see how the cases are looking after they've allowed the uh, restaurants and things to open up. Restaurants and bars will be allowed to open at 25% capacity with up to hundred people. Uh, same rules apply. Tables got to be six feet apart. Uh, no more than six people per table. Um, outdoor tents are still permitted. And bars and restaurants got to be closed by 10 p.m. Now, what will still be closed is workplaces that can work from home, nightclubs, contact sports, and water parks will still be shut down. Mm -hmm. And updating for the new strain of the virus, there was uh, two additional people in Washtenaw County with the various variant cases of COVID um, were linked to earlier cases and those cases are associated with the University of Michigan. Okay. Yeah. That is all I got on COVID today. 
So let's oh, I do got some more before I move. Hospital ca capacity um, is in a seven week decline. Um, currently at 9.9% .9 for beds uh, dedicated to COVID. Um, overall cases are 225 cases per million, which peaked at 740 cases per million in November. Uh, those are on a decline. And the overall positivity rate is at 6.8% and declining. So, I mean, we on the right track. So that's why we got the, the uh, order for the openings for the small gatherings to happen at the bars and at the uh, um, the restaurants. Right. Well, uh, again, folks, we talk about this every week and, um, you know, I beat that drum. We are actually, I guess we can say, starting to see somewhat of a light at the end of the tunnel. The numbers are declining. Uh, but folks, let me tell you something. We, we still have to be careful out there. We still want to be safe. Uh, this, this virus, for people who've actually had the virus, now uh, I'm reading studies and uh, they're talking about uh, the effects of the, the long term, and not even long term because it hasn't been long enough, but the effects that people are starting to have on physically who uh, had the virus. They're talking about uh, quite a few symptoms uh, that people are experiencing. Uh, from having it. So this virus, uh, we don't know the long-term effects of it. So please continue. I know it's tough and you want to say fuck it, but at this point, excuse my language, at this point, you, you got to just <laughs> they do uh, do your due diligence and, and continue right. to be safe, wear the mask, you know, as more people get vaccinated, uh, hopefully those will continue to help, but don't don't think that you're out of the woods. Realistically, it's going to be another four to six months before we can get even a true amount of people or a good amount of people vaccinated. So probably messed that word up if somebody want to ring a bell on that one. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. People, you know, you know, they have to get two doses. I know some other pharmaceutical companies are trying to come, come online with a vaccine and uh the new uh, President Biden seems to be a number one focus. So I do see light at the end of the tunnel. So for those of you that have been frustrated or been really staying inside and trying to maintain and get through this, continue doing what you're doing, uh, it's, it's working. You know, the shutdown uh, here in Michigan probably has helped us decline these numbers. Uh, so continue to just uh, try to keep a positive attitude and stay safe with it. Uh, it's, it's real, folks. It's real. Uh, so, Dan, uh, before we get into it with Tiffany this afternoon, uh, what, uh, mm -hmm. you had something in our production meeting. We talked a little bit about it. Uh, just wanted to get your perspective on what is going on since the January 6th uh, insurgent slash terrorist act by uh, mm. a bunch of the previous president's uh, supporters. Uh, what you want to get on your chest on that subject this um, evening? I've been seeing a bunch of people making excuses. And yeah. I mean, it's just flat out unacceptable. Just the, the behavior that we saw that day. And then for people to try to compare it to previous um, demonstrations is complete bullshit. And I'm not excusing my language because that's the only fair word I could think of that can describe what what we saw. Um, in my opinion, I, I feel like the line's been drawn in the sand a long time ago. Personally, I don't see any changes happening anytime soon. And I think this is what we know. We had a president and other elected members of the government lying about the facts of the election. Um, those actions led to a terrorist mob storm in the Capitol, looking to capture and or kill other elected officials of the government because they didn't like the presidential election results. Um, they had their day in court or several courts. Right. And they lost. They never in court brought up anything about voter fraud. It was all just little meticulous things to try to get votes taken away, but nothing that would overturn an election. Um, 
then following the aftermath, um, I'm seeing a bunch of people defend the actions of insurrectionists and try to compare them to protests that jumped off in 2020 or prior. And uh, I think people who know me know I'm not a proponent of rioting. I, I don't really care for rioting. People who know our family know we lost <clears throat> our grandfather in the riots in uh, 68. So I'm not a fan of riots. I don't. I think they get attention, but and they get reactions, but I don't think they get things done. So um, I would echo the words of D.L. Hughley and to reiterate that we are not the same. Um, the things that people were protesting previously in Wisconsin when they took over the Capitol was about collective bargaining rights. And anybody that's in a, a police department or worked at a factory or worked anywhere where a union is know that collective bargaining rights is important to your survival as an employee there. Um, if you don't have collective bargaining rights, you may not be working in a safe environment. You may not have a competitive wage. You may lose your job without cause. All those things are a part of what collective bargaining bring to the table, which is why those people were protesting in Wisconsin in 2011. Um, so that's, it's just not the same. Um, I, I think when people protesting and then there's a lack of accountability when police officers murder people on camera and we see it and they're not held accountable, that's different. The leniency afforded to police officers when they do that or the leniency that we saw afforded to the people at the Capitol, that's different. There's an overwhelming response of force when people want justice, but then the doors were uncovered and open for them when they want to overthrow the government. Um, and we, and people are acting like there's nothing happened. We're right. not the same. It's not the same issue. It's not the same problem. So anybody that's posting shit, trying to compare it, you, you full of shit doing that, in my opinion. And you and, I, and most of the people that's doing it, I feel like they know better. And they standing on one side of a political spectrum or the other. This ain't about politics when you got people storming a government building with Confederate flags. That's some different shit. We ain't the same. All black people want is to be treated equal and to be treated fairly. We don't want other people to get shot up because we may get shot up. We just want this, we want the playing field even. That's it. So those people are nothing like those other protesters at all. Because those other protesters wasn't trying to capture or kill anybody. They was trying to get votes done. That's that's a difference. So I, I feel like whenever we got this platform that we will speak and address these discrepancies that are thrown out there. And people that's making excuses for the bullshit that took place on the 6th, I'm not buying it. And I don't think any of us are having it and your day is done. Right. I'm off my soapbox now. And not the, well, somebody got to get on the soapbox every Sunday because that's <laughs> the soapbox Sunday. And not just uh, reiterate on there, folks, I think that uh, a big part of why we saw what we saw is uh, people have trust in leaders. People follow the lead of leaders. And when you have a leader like our previous um, president, in office, I think uh, people blindly will follow that leadership and unfortunately was part of them again. I'm not justifying what happened. I just think that uh, people blindly follow. And I, I'll say be careful with that uh, in every sense because the same way those uh, people went out on the sixth and did what they did based off of uh, their beliefs and the following and for us looking at it on the other side, and especially when they try to compare it to things that we've experienced. Uh, just here as recent as uh, this past summer with all of the uh, the protests that went on, the so-called riot, I won't say so-called, but what was considered to be rioting because of the frustration. There, there was an anger, there, you know, people were being hit and they wanted to hit back, you know, uh, in this situation, like you said, you can't compare the two, but I will say to people before they 
you know, go out and want to stand for a cause to the point where you may be crossing the line or you may be doing something that's considered illegal, do a little bit more fact checking, you know, uh, the same way we're on here and we have our opinion on things, uh, people still need to make their opinions based off of doing some type of fact check. Or, or trying to at least get an understanding from both sides before you make that decision. And we can talk about this for hours because it's so frustrating. But uh, we know, we know that uh, it is not the same. And all we can do is continue to use a strong arm to push that we're not accepting it anymore. Uh, we can't turn another cheek. I'm not saying that we need to come out and be violent like we've seen others but we need to continue to use our voices to point out that it's not acceptable and any official that doesn't see fit i'm sorry not see fit but doesn't see the importance of their role in changing these things and we don't see those changes we will need to make swift and immediate actions towards those individuals and uh, those positions of power to make sure that as we go forward it's not acceptable uh, the current president is making some really uh, some statements and some plans that you know seem to be moving the country back into a right place, getting us uh, in some better relationship with some of the uh, our allies out there in the world. So things seem to be you know turning back around, but don't lose sight of what happened on the sixth, and most definitely continue to stay diligent on challenging even at your local level officials to make sure that things are moving in the right direction. You know, got my fingers crossed, you know, we'll see. We're, we're literally uh, four days into this new elected uh, president, uh, so we'll see. But to change gears a little bit here, we didn't bring this uh, beautiful Miss Tiffany on just to talk politics. Oh no, hey, do your thing. <laughs> this you know, is our thing, I like you. <laughs> I know we talked about it on some other podcasts that we like to try to get individuals on um, for numerous reasons. Uh, first of all, because I know you guys are tired of just looking at my face and, and Dan's <laughs> face. Mm -hmm. it, as beautiful as we are, uh, but we like to get guests on, to, you know, share different perspectives on things, as well as I talk about it all the time on our podcast, promote people that have... Um, started their own business, have product lines and things of that nature. So without any further ado, we're gonna give Tiff a chance to, first of all, tell everybody uh, you know, a little bit about yourself and what you got going on uh, kicking off 2021. I've been hearing some things. Oh, uh, yeah. That's another cuz, so what up cuz? <laughs> What's the deal, family? I see all the family on the live too. Hey, everybody. And of course, y'all know me. It's, it's Tiff, you know, but I am also known as Black Cat. So the product that I do have is called Black Cat Slip Beauty. Um, it is lip gloss. It's not only just lip gloss. It actually is vitamins for the lips. So we have the shea butter. Um, it's not animal tested. It's vegan free for anybody, you know, is a vegan. So it is vegan free. And I will be opening up my store within the next two weeks and I will have a grand opening there, everybody. I will post it. Actually, I will put it out on a flyer and post it for anybody who would like to come for the two new shades that I just added to my family. I started off with two shades. Now I'm at seven different shades of Black Cat's Lip oh, Beauty. So you know, trying to get it popping. But yes, I will be opening up my, my store. So I will... Uh, post that with the address for people to come. Anybody who would like to purchase Black Cat's Lip Beauty can go on the website at blackcatslipbeauty.com. Let's talk about that website for a minute, Rich. <laughs> okay. I got it in the comments. People can, uh, they can, they can go up and check out the website. Yes, I had to, I had to call my cousin. We had to get this website together, and it was very. Let me tell you something. It was very challenging, but I boy, we pulled it off. We got it together. So you definitely can go to blackcatslivebeauty.com to make a purchase if you like. I also do local pickups in the Detroit area, or you can also get delivery in the Detroit area as well. Oh, awesome. 
I have a Facebook also. It is Black Cats Lip Beauty. And my Instagram is Black Cats underscore Lip Beauty underscore LLC. Awesome. And say that fast 30 times, everybody. Black Cats. Black I think everybody, it's like a tongue twister for them, but it's black cats. Mm-hmm. I'm so used to saying it anyway. So it's blackcatslipbeauty.com. But people be like, black, 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 black. Black, black. Make sure I don't screw that up. That's blackcatslipbeauty, baby. Blackcatslipbeauty.com. But I love it. I love it. That is so awesome. Thank so, you, cuz. So just um, get, get, you know, to back up here, because we have so many talented people out here. Uh, Tiff, tell me, you know, how did how did we get here? I mean, uh, you know, how did you... How did I came with the lip gloss company? To come up with that is something that you pursued. Uh, tell us a little bit about your backstory on it, if you don't mind. Um, well, for being younger, I, I always said if I would do anything as far as being an entrepreneur would be with lip gloss because I simply love lip gloss. Like if people know me, they know I love glitter and they know I love lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is over the pandemic, uh, when it first really hit us last year, um, I actually ordered some lip gloss over that time. And when I ordered the lip gloss, it, it was just taking forever. It took like over two, three weeks for it to get here. And I just was sitting at my dining room table one day, like, and just thought about it, like, damn, I ordered this lip gloss and it ain't came yet. So I was like, you know what? I'm about to just come up with my own lip gloss. I connected with this one person who mm-hmm. I know was selling things at a time. I connected with her and I asked her, her name is Toy, shout out to Toy. I connected with her because I know she was selling lashes at the time and asked her, how can I go about trying to do my lip gloss business? And she gave me what I needed and and it went off from there. That is awesome. Well, first off, I want to say how proud I am personally of you for getting up and going. Uh, So get that out there. But most, my next thing I guess I'll say is when we talk about you know, stepping outside that circle, especially because of the pandemic, people had to mo- uh, had to move differently. Right. You had people uh, who normally was, you know, you know, some as simple as going to work. People who had to start working from home, or people who unfortunately lost their job job due to uh, the pandemic. Uh, people were just at home, and you know, we had people unfortunately who you know went into depression for. You know, whatever reason, we had people who, you know, just really had a hard time dealing with this. But we also had people who, during this downtime, you know, stepped out and took a chance. And Tiff, you you are exactly one of those people we talked about who, you know, took a, this downtime. You know, like you said, it started out some simple as I'm waiting on a product that I, I love to use. Hey, why don't I create and come up with my own line of that product and start out? I mean, I know I've watched you since the start of it, and I see people from all over the country. And if I'm not mistaken, you even had somebody from uh, across the pond that bought your product, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I've been watching you. Uh, we're still really picking up on it. Hopefully, with our, you know, our huge following, we can get you some more people. Uh, but folks, just a great example of uh, taking a negative and turning it into a positive. Also, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, uh, I talked about, a, I made a statement, and I won't say the statement specifically because I don't remember, but I just talked about <laughs> the importance of uh, stop second guessing yourself and putting off moving forward with your goals or your ideals. Uh, thinking that the time is not right. This is the right time. The time is now. It's time for you to do it. And shout out to Tiffany for Black Cats. Right. (laughs) Right. So I I, I applaud the idea. And I love it when when anybody ever want to put something together and, you know, kind of put their business ideas together. And we sat at the table and we had drinks and I, I was doing my best to try to 
get the website up and running and wasn't touching our website. So we ended up getting her uh, a template in place and she took that thing and ran with it, man. And I'm proud of her for that. So I, I'm really proud of her for that because it doesn't matter if it worked or not. What mattered was that we did it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I think that's the biggest thing to see it, see it work. Let's see if it's gonna work or not. And even if it didn't work, then we figure out how to pivot and move on and go from there. Exactly. So I, I definitely appreciate it. You know, you coming to me and giving me the opportunity to learn what I learned just trying to build the website because like I said, we was trying to do our own thing and I was struggling. So when I had the opportunity to play in that thing with yours <laughs> in the different formats, I learned a lot. So right, it, it, right. we helped each other, believe it or not. Absolutely. And that's what I said. I said, you know what? I know who I can go to. I'm gonna go over here to Reggie and we gonna we gonna get this thing together. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. And I so, am truly, truly, truly happy that I was able to either you got it, Reggie got it totally started from us picking through and trying to find different things and everything like that to even get it started. And once we got it on that on that on that issue, I was able to I just really with me, I had to really sit and just figure the stuff out because I was just so I was mm -hmm. trying to get it out so fast I had to really just do some research so after after Reggie set it up I was able to look through it and actually see what I needed to do to, to move forward to actually get it to move in the way that I needed to get it moving and just to go back to what you said Carl about stepping out on faith basically because there's a lot of times I doubted myself when doing it because we I think the virus is like a a bittersweet at the end of the day because mm -hmm. we work so much like we work all our lives for you to just say i'm not about to work no more and just focus on my my own brand like if this was probably like three years ago i would i would have said no because i think i need to still do that nine to five but when we had this time to sit back and just really take a grasp on life like I really don't need that nine to five though you see what i'm saying so that was it was it was like a bittersweet thing but it took for me to get there to get here. And that's how I was really just networking with me. That's great. And uh, there's so many more examples out there uh, of people who've done that same thing. So as you see, we really like to get people like yourself, Tiffany, on here because I know it's people out here who have great ideals, who want to move forward, who are tired of working for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's not something that just happens overnight, but it's also not going to happen if you don't start taking some steps. I talk about it all the time in some of my previous, um, uh, what I'll call uh, life experiences. I talk about uh, being an outside salesperson and okay. the outside salesperson is someone who, you know, goes typically business to business or door to door. Uh, if it's in the uh, residential uh, environment. And in order for you to be successful with that, the first step in being successful at being an outside salesperson is, believe it or not, getting out of the damn car. You know, I talk about <laughs> all the time. In order for you to knock those doors and be successful and, and overcome adversity, you got to get out of the car. Right. You got to get out of the car and you got to pound the pavement. So uh, if you got an ideal and you think it's something that uh, you're not think, if you know you're passionate about it, others will follow. And I'm going to tell you why, Tiff, you've been successful. It's because people see your passion, like you said at the start. You, people know you love glitter. They know you love you lip, some lip gloss. Uh, you already had that mindset with people when they think about you. And I'd just like to talk about that for a second. People, people out here who have these ideals, people already will, will support you. Uh, they, they will support you whether they realize it or not, but they most definitely will support you when they see that you are passionate about it and it makes sense. And when I heard that you had a lip gloss line, it was like, that make perfect sense. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if you came out selling uh, tires, I would have probably <laughs> put a tire that was going to do as well for you. Right. So, kudos Absolutely. 
You found something so, that fits your personality. People who know you say, yep, absolutely. I can support and get behind that. And folks, there's many more of you out there who have these same abilities. Um, I'm not going to get into your business, but I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure you didn't start out with a huge financial backing. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you started out, you know, at the bottom and, you know, you held, you held your faith and, and, and your product and your dream mm -hmm. and people, it can be done. It's just as simple, you know, Definitely. I heard what she says, she's getting ready to open a brick and mortar, an actual store for you to be able to come and get this product. You know, she oh. started out like Master P slinging the, right. the gloss out of her <laughs> And now she's getting ready to open up her, uh, right. you know, a brick and mortar. And I just thought it was lip gloss, you know, so kudos to you. There's also other things. And it's not just lip gloss. It's actually uh, lip therapy. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. important. For all of you people out there with these chalky lips, you know what you were doing. <laughs> uh, this product could be all right and help you with that. For those of you that are uh, concerned about uh, products that are being tested on animals or products that aren't safe, this is products that haven't, uh, you know, no animals have been uh, used to test this product. Absolutely. As well as there's products with be uh, for vegans, so this is a safe and healthy product. This is great. You know, yes. I can't talk about it enough. Dad, yes. you have so do me, a, do me a favor. It? Talk to us about getting out the car and the pop-up <laughs> shop experience and what it took for that grind going to those bazaars and, and, and meeting all those people and all those other different entrepreneurs. What did you get out of that experience? Um, the pop-up wow. shops I have done, me or Carl? You. you. When you go me. to those little, yeah, the things that y'all do on the weekend. Okay, yeah. Um, so I have did a total of I want to say probably six pop up shops. Mm -hmm. Out of that six, out of that six, three of them was mine personally. Okay. The first one I did was um, I really wanted to see how to function because it was my first time even really indulging in the pop up shop period. So the first one that I did, I wanted to really see how things were set up and how do it go with people interacting and buying things from each other. So the first one I did when I went and just seen all these other different vendors and everybody selling everything and everybody patronizing everybody, it, it was it was it was really just like cool to me to see everybody really patronizing each other. So what made me want to do it? I I when I did my my own when Black Cats Live Beauty did its own. I wanted to do it because I am selling my product, but it's actually, I like to see the fact that I have other people who are able to try to get their name out there as well. My name is out there and it can uh, uh, go bigger than what it is, but I really just do it because it's just, it's like comfort to me. Like I like to see mm -hmm. people, meeting people, new people, seeing what they have. You never know who you're meeting when you're doing a uh, pop-up shop. So I feel like that experience alone is just amazing. Great. So what's required when, you, when you're doing that? Like what's the setup? Like how do you go about doing something like that? If somebody want to do a pop-up shop, what, is, what does that take? Well, actually, the pop-up shop is really very simple to do. It, it just really depends on if you have enough. Um, I'm not saying it's like a fan base, but it's mm -hmm. like if you if you know enough people to where if you say I'm going to have a pop-up shop and I got 25 spots open. If your name is out there enough, you would get people to gravitate towards that pop-up shop. So it's really basically just throwing a, a gathering mm -hmm. and who going to okay. attend that gathering. So once you put it out there, I have, and then, and then it's very important because I, I, I have seen people do pop-up shops. It's very important to get your pop-up shop in an area where people are patronizing the area. You don't go say you having a pop-up shop and on the corner of Finkel. Nobody walks on Finkel. So right. it's very important to have a good location <laughs> where you having these pop-up shops because you okay. want people to patronize. It's really good to do traffic. it, huh? <laughs> you need foot traffic. Yes. So right. it's really okay. good to do it like in the, in the spring and the summer because people was out walking a lot more. But if you are doing one in the, in the wintertime like now, it's really good to have a nice venue 
and it don't look like you about to get shot up coming to a pop-up shop or people gonna stick you up for your product. So that's right. like the very important thing where it's people actually around in the area to have a pop-up shop at. So it's really right. simple to do it though. Like I said, it's like inviting you to a party, but it's just okay. vendors. Awesome. And for those of you that are doing pop-up shops and maybe do the budgeting, you gotta be someplace that maybe not as, um, what you consider to be safe. Keep in mind Athena Protection Services, we are available <laughs> for uh, security as well. Get in contact with us for that. Or if you're a pop-up shop, you're just concerned about, uh, and I shouldn't say concerned, but you just want to make sure that the environment is safe, we can help you with that. Uh, we offer different levels of security. Uh, if you you know, feel the need for armed security, we offer that to you as well. So something to keep in mind is uh, we do this not only to promote others, but we also here to promote ourselves. That was the absolutely. Uh, but Tiff, thank you so much for that input. Right. Uh, no problem. That that's just great, great information there, uh, and hopefully somebody will be inspired to take that step. Stop second guessing yourself. Uh, your passion is your passion only, and the only person that's going to be able to get that out there to the masses is you. So uh, shout out again to you for pursuing your dream. Uh, and it, and this, it, it doesn't have to be something extravagant. You know, mm -hmm. people, I know for me as a guy, lip, lip gloss is, you know, or lip therapy I'll say is, is something that's important to me personally. Uh, I don't like having them uh, uh, Dave Chappelle when he the uh, <laughs> he crack his crusty dry, chalky lips. I try my best to hydrate, and mm -hmm. uh, with it being lip therapy, something great, you know, for all of you, uh, you know, you smokers out there who lips get to be a little chalky mm -hmm. and, and and dry. Those those products can most definitely help you with that as well, I'm sure. So especially in the winter time when you get dried out. Oh man, that's what I'm talking about here in, yeah. uh, here specifically in, in Michigan, you know, we had 40 degree weather one day uh, this, this past week. And today we got people with 20 car pilots because of the ice and snow. Right. Yeah. I, might well, I got one more question for you. How successful were you in leveraging social media to get your brand out there? What, what, what did you see was the best platform well, where you got the best, the most response from? Um, Facebook will be the best for me. I indulge in uh, Instagram and Twitter, but I'm not really, I, I don't really be on Twitter or, or Instagram, but on Facebook is where I got my most followers on there. So I use Facebook okay. platform to really advertise Black Cat's Lip Beauty. So a great point. Uh, we have so many social media platforms out there available. Uh, you know, utilize your platform that you feel will be the best fit to get your message across. I tell people all the time, you know, the different social media platforms, you, you attract different uh, fan bases. And I know Facebook uh, has a ton of, we're on it now. So Facebook has yeah. a, ton of, a ton of opportunities for you to, uh, do things of that nature. But if you're a huge person on Twitter or if it's Instagram for you or, or Snapchat, uh, I personally would tell you if you have all of those, continue to push them uh, because you just never know. But figuring out which is the best place for you to you know, push, push starting out is important. So that's good information again, Tiff, uh, utilizing that platform. Yeah, Facebook is a good one. I, I'm trying, but I, I need to get the other two popping as well. Because on Facebook, I got 30,000 followers on Facebook. All right. I need to have 30,000 on Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. You know, just continue to share share those. Yeah, uh, let so people know you on there. Yeah. Let people know where you are. Uh, so kudos to her. You know, we, we've been on now for a little bit over uh, 40 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Want to talk about something that we talked about briefly on the production meeting and then we'll right. you know, try to wrap up. But want to switch gears just a little bit for a second uh, and get Tiff's 
uh, point of point of view on some things. But before I get into that, one last time, Dan, before we get to the end of the show, just in case we have some people get on late, let the mm -hmm. listeners know who we are and how they can get in touch with us. We are Athena Protection Service, security company. And you can reach us on any social media platform at Athena Protection Service, or you can reach us on our 800 number at 800 951 4866. It's 1 800 951 4866. Awesome. So, the, the next topic we want to talk about, uh, and Dad, you did some research, and it's a couple of stories uh, that just happened in the past week. And unfortunately, uh, we've had yet again some. Uh, children killed due to lack of gun safety. So if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, there was a three-year-old, I don't, there's a Wasso or a Wasso, uh, Michigan. It's north of Lansing, northeast, 35 miles northeast of Lansing. Um, a three-year-old boy uh, got a hold of a firearm and shot himself and uh, he did not survive. Um, this is following an 18-month-year-old boy in Detroit who got access to a gun and shot his five-year-old cousin. We we mentioned this a lot. And that cousin also yeah. passed away. Right. Firearm safes, not safes, but gun locks are free. If you got a firearm loose, lock it. They're free. You can get trigger locks and most of the time at no charge or most guns come with gun locks that you can lock the gun up with. They are free. Um, and if you do get one that costs you money, it's not gonna cost you that much money where it's gonna break the bank. And I'm talking like under $20. You can get a lock for your weapon. Um, this unfortunately keeps happen happening. It's an avoidable situation to keep your firearms in a safe place away from children. And it's happening over and over and over again. And we got two kids dead this year already um, from uh, poor handling of firearms and having them, you know, where kids could get to them. Uh, this this is unacceptable and avoidable. So, um, I, you know, I think those whoever those gun owners are will probably have to answer for. Uh, those deaths that happened because those kids got to those weapons in those homes. Not only that, uh, I'm definitely going to have to answer for it, but just, you know, that being on your heart, that you, you being responsible for some that unfortunate happening because you didn't uh, Not only that. secure your uh, weapon. Uh, it's important and we get it people you know are in environments where they you know for whatever reason they feel they need to have uh these firearms for protection uh it's so important that you safely handle those products and i think a huge thing that is happening out here when we hear these cases is individuals have this false sense of reality that these young babies won't get a hold to a firearm, and if they do get a hold to it, they won't be able to fire it. Uh, as we know, that's not the case. Uh, in most cases, unfortunately, it's a self-inflicted wound, like you talked about with the three-year-old, but even in cases with an 18-year-old being able to grab a weapon and, and squeeze that trigger and, you know, shoot another young kid, there's a possibility. When these kids pick these fire guns up, firearms up is almost instinctively that they look down that barrel of that weapon and unfortunately that's how usually the kids are hurt or killed is that weapon firing off uh, and hitting them somewhere in the, the head or or, or uh, upper body uh, mm -hmm. just because of the amount of pressure it takes to pull that trigger. They're usually pulling that trigger with their thumb and unfortunately that's something that happens when it's being held uh, facing themselves. Uh, 18 month old typically is not gonna be able to take a gun and point it at somebody and squeeze with their trigger finger. Uh, but that's just a little bit of the, the uh, breakdown of how it happens, but we know the overall reason it happened is because people aren't being safe. 
and I know Tiff has three beautiful boys. Uh, man, uh, I don't know if you want the public to know how old they are because you just look. Of so course. <laughs> Got, of course. Uh, some young men actually, you know, yeah. in the house with her. So she got her some protection. But just as a as a parent, as a mother, you know, just you know, give us your how how do you feel about, you know, when you hear these type of things and anything you can, you know, share to hopefully get people to understand the importance of gun safety. Yeah, it, it's it's really it really hurts to hear what any kid is able to get guns and just playing with them dropping them accidentally or anything I have I do have three boys in here I don't have no gun in the house um they don't have no gun in the house and when I do hear stories like that it, it, it really saddens me because it's like you couldn't take the time out just to put this gun away to where you got kids able to play with it or drop it accidental or anything so it hurt my heart to know that one of my children got one of my gun and killed another one of my kids. So it's, it's very, very important for people. They have these guns and I know it's for protection or whatever, but just make sure you lock it away. You have to lock it away. And it had to be like laid down low for the kid to get it. Cause if it was high, of course it wouldn't, it would have been out of reach. So it's, it's very, it's very important to, to lock it away. I tell you guys all the time, a funny story. Cause Tiff just made a comment about it. It had to right. be someplace low. Uh, as I stopped in the grocery store today and grabbed the, I only grabbed a half a dozen of uh, <laughs> Krispy Kreme donuts. But for those of you that are huge social media followers, I want to say it was this past summer that there was a, a toddler, couldn't have been more than two years old, climbed up onto the stove to grab the whole dozen of Krispy Kreme donuts. He took what? it here and slid it over to the stove. I'm sorry, a stoop and slid it over there and stood on it and grabbed the whole to the whole dozen of donuts. Unfortunately, the donuts uh, flipped over. He fell off of the chair. The box fell onto the floor. <laughs> the toddler picked up his donut. Any other time, he'd have been crying, screaming bloody murder because he fell onto the floor pretty hard. But he went back to his mission. Once he recuperated from the initial shock of falling, he completed his mission. He grabbed the gun <laughs> and he took off. So I would say that even a two-year-old, uh, a toddler, don't underestimate uh, what they can reach. The, the what a, ch a child can reach uh, when they get to that age. We already know they like to climb. They're very curious. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I had my son at a young age, uh, someone bought him a toy uh, a toy gun and I didn't want him playing with it uh, for obvious reasons uh, growing up uh, black in America, just didn't want him playing with that gun outside. Right. And I put it on top of, on top of the cabinet in my kitchen. And I don't know how he even knew it was up there. He said he was coming down the stairs. Anybody been in my house, as you come down the stairs, you can see. Uh, but this young young son of mine was able to climb up there and get that that uh, toy down. Now, right. luckily for me, it was a toy. I wouldn't have put a real firearm up there thinking that was protection. But I would have never thought that he would have been able to not only see it up there, but get it. Exactly. Don't underestimate these, these children in that aspect of it. Um, you know, a lot of people are like you, Tiff. They don't have guns in the house. Uh, I will say that it's important that we had this conversation about the gun safety with them anyway, right. because they're going to be out and about and I don't know how many times on a snow day. Uh, uh, I remember vividly some teenagers being in the home that you know they was all at one of the kids house because they didn't have school that day and somebody went and got grandma's gun and it was loaded and was trying to show it to their friends and unfortunately another one of the teens was shot with that weapon and i just know that uh even i growing up somebody would you know hey check this weapon out and everybody would be crowded around want to check it out and see it or want to talk about what they daddy or they uncle kind of gun they got and i know about guns and let me see it and all 
So, you know, just make sure that your, your sons especially right. uh, understand the importance of no matter where they're at. You know, you don't have firearms in your home, but no matter where you're at, that you understand if someone pulls out a firearm, number one, if you don't have the ability to tell them to put that shit back up, remove yourself from that situation. Exactly. You know, because so many times these accidents happen. Number one, because people don't understand how to properly handle firearms. And number two, because um, they're so easy to, you know, want to be in the in crowd and want to be around these situations, remove yourself from that situation. You can't right. do this enough because I can't imagine how those individuals that unfortunately left those weapons unsafe, how they have to feel now that, um, you know, we, we can't charge a, a 18 month old for shooting a five year old. That's, that's right. not a criminal case. You know, we got to charge to who, who left that weapon out. So yeah, you got to charge the guardian. Get, not only are you dealing with the loss of, unfortunately, a, a baby, but mm -hmm. now you got to deal with some some uh, potential jail time because you weren't safe. So, and I know that's, you know, you can go to jail and you can survive that and get out and be fine. Uh, Kwame just got home after being locked up for seven years. Uh, that's a whole nother topic. We'll talk about that maybe on another <laughs> Uh, you can come home from jail. You can't come home from getting killed. And, I know and then that. how can you how can you tell this eighteen month old that they killed their own sibling as they get older? They, they you know, process and they even understand it. They just want to know why that person ain't here no more. No, I'm just saying, like, as the, when a kid get older, like you know, oh, this absolutely. is what you know what I'm saying. Like, how can you explain that? Yeah, most definitely. So that's. You know, it's a, it's a tough topic, and I know it's, it's one that, you know, pulls at anybody's heartstrings. I don't want to see no child, you know, get hurt in any way, shape, or form. Right. Most definitely with a lack of uh, doing the right thing by being safe with a firearm shouldn't be the reason. But Kwame hit me up the other day, though. Like I said, that's a great topic for another day. Yeah, uh, we, we can talk to Kwame next time. <laughs> with some people who have been right now saying, what about Bobby? Bobby Schmurda? Like, uh, no, Bobby yeah, Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> what about Bobby Ferguson? Like I said, that's, that's, that's a topic for another day. We, we, we're getting close here to the 9 o'clock hour, and I promise yeah. that the listeners, as well as we talked about before, I, I didn't want to uh, stay on here too late this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, again, just want to follow up uh, what we talked about today uh, on the show is uh, we always talk about the COVID numbers and give an update there. Uh, we know that Metro Detroit is the prime uh, hotspot of Michigan for the virus, which is where we all reside. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners do. So continue to stay uh, safe out there, wear the mask, um, it's not quite time to do a bunch of uh, huge gatherings. Just be safe uh, and think about not just you and how you know you'll be all right, but think about those family members that you could possibly be in contact with who won't be as safe if they were to unfortunately contract the virus, as well as we also talked about people who contract, contact, contracted the virus the uh, lasting effects that uh, studies are starting to see. Uh, so my prayers and, and, and concerns will go out to those of you who've actually had the virus. And, you know, I, I, I would just tell you to continue to seek medical attention, anything that doesn't feel right, uh, anything that you're experiencing that you don't think you should be experienced, seek some medical attention, uh, stay on top of this. Don't just shake it off as, you know, I'm always tired or I'm always sore because I work. Then we uh, talked a little bit about uh, uh, we're not the same. And, 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 and I'm talking about that as, as of what we saw on January the 6th. We are not the same. We know that. Uh, but we also know that we've been able to use our voice to change the narrative. We were able to vote vote for a change at the highest office in the country. 
uh, because we weren't satisfied with the direction that leadership was going in um, and the way it was separating the country. Uh, so shout out to that. And then we are most definitely, as you see, and thank you, Tiff, for coming on today. We have Tiff oh, yeah. Tiffany on here promoting Black her cat, product. Black, Black Cat's Lip Beauty. Black Cat's Lip Beauty. Lip Beauty. Uh, <laughs> I heard somebody trying to say that earlier, and it was hilarious <laughs> because they were butchering it up. Uh, it's, like, it's like trying to, to say a tongue twister for some. It's a tongue twister for sure. For others. As you look at the black cat over her shoulder, it's black cats. Mm -hmm. Lip beauty. It's just that simple. Uh, that simple. So, uh, shout out to you for coming on and talking, not only just talking and promoting your product, but talking about how you stepped out on uh, faith and even started up the product during the pandemic. Uh, because so many others have come to a conclusion that, uh, how can I put it, they don't want to work for the man anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you can get up on Monday morning and just say, I don't want to do it and quit. No, that's not what we're saying. We're right. saying have a plan in place <laughs> Absolutely. And, and do it. And the last thing I want to talk about, and uh, Dan, you probably think I forgot about it, but I didn't. Uh, last week at the end of our podcast, or somewhere <laughs> in there, we talked about uh, holding ourselves more accountable. Yes, we did. Total changes in our life to you know better ourselves i talked about it when we were having technical difficulties i talked about me just getting up an extra half an hour uh now i push myself to an extra hour uh that i get up and i have to work what i consider to be pretty early in the morning i know people work far earlier than i do or way earlier <laughs> Uh, but we talked about uh, holding ourselves accountable, and Dan actually made uh, on the on the podcast. He made a statement that he was going to get up <laughs> six thirty every morning. I heard and, him say that too. And, I and sure did. He to reach out to me, and I'm gonna report to you guys that I was very impressed. Uh, <laughs> he had a list of things he wanted to get accomplished uh, for the week. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I didn't respond to one of the emails, but uh, he did do exactly that. He hit me up just about every day, right at 6.30. A couple of days, it might have been 6.32, 6.34. Yeah. One know. day it was 6.50, but other than that, it was good. <laughs> hey, I'm talking about that. The bottom line is it was still before, before seven. I'm not a drill sergeant. It's the fact that it was the first week and out of five days, one day you was 20 minutes late. I'm all right with that right. Uh, because we know that these things that we are trying to do are easy, uh, but it starts with you. Just like Tiff said, hey, I want to do this. Uh, black cats, lip beauty. <laughs> you gotta start somewhere and right. i just want to say uh dan did his thing and he got some some great things on a personal level as well on the uh business level got some things accomplished this week by uh pushing himself i know adding that extra half hour onto mm -hmm. my uh, start time uh for me has been more of a um uh, a physical thing to get myself physically uh back in, in shape and get back to 100% after being uh, having some challenges uh, physically. It's been a help for me. Uh, I'm not ready to, to do a journey yet on any uh, weight loss goals, anything like that. The, the focus has just been to, right. to better myself and be in a healthier situation. I'm, I've continued to eat healthy uh, this past week. Um, haven't had a lot of fast food. Uh, so shout out to me on that. But folks, it starts there. Challenge yourself to do something different than what you was doing before. We all know that if you continue to do the same things that you're doing right now, you're not getting any results. How do you think you're going to get some if you continue to do them? I think they call that insanity when you do the same thing mm -hmm. over and over and expect different results. Right. We, that won't help. Uh, so we will continue to challenge ourselves. We challenge you to challenge yourselves. Uh, Tiff, before you go, if you could just tell the people one more time how they can get in touch with you, with your website. 
Yes, I sure can. You can reach blackcatslipbeauty.com to make a purchase if you do not want to leave home. You also can find me on Facebook and that's just at Black Cats Lip Beauty. And I'm also on Instagram, Black Cats underscore. And let me just be, make this clear. It's, it's two T's and an S. So it's B-L-A-C-K-C-A-T-T-S, lipbeauty.com. And Black Cats underscore, lip underscore, beauty underscore LLC on Instagram. Awesome. And we're going to get her on Twitter as well. I mean, she's already on there, but we're going to... Yeah, I'm on Twitter as well. Get those followers up on some of those platforms, other platforms. But man, how awesome is it that you have over 30,000 on Facebook? And folks, you know, the reason, you know, I talk about us bringing people on. Tip, Tiffany has 30,000 followers on, on Facebook alone. 30,000. So let's just let that sink in for a minute. Every time she posts some, she has the opportunity to uh, get 30,000 people's, uh, you know, views on, on that product. Uh, so when we talk about networking, it's so important that you network with people like Tiffany uh, when, when you're doing things, uh, reach out to pop-up shops she talked about earlier. It's important to, you know, get involved in those because you will meet those other individuals out there who have laid the foundation. You know, Tiff didn't go out there and try to reinvent the wheel. There's tons of lip glosses products out there, lip therapy, uh, but guess what? People are gonna support you uh, because they see you have a passion. Uh, that would be crazy. That would be like saying, well, there's only one type of beer out there and that's the only one that people drink. I don't know when the last time one of you guys been in the beer aisle at a, a grocery store or liquor store. It's a mm -hmm. lot of different beers out there and I, they all are getting sold. So right. I don't think you're oversaturating the market. People will buy products from you because they like you. People will support you because they like you. Uh, so continue to be a person that's likable. Continue to have a passion about what your dreams are and people will support that because people instinctively want to support somebody who they feel are uh, true and honest and, 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 and passionate about their, their dreams. Uh, and that's why Tiff is successful in 2021. She's about to blow up. It's like, man, this, this is real. So <laughs> folks, uh, it's time for you to stop second guessing yourself. It's time to stop making excuses. It's time to move forward. And again, it doesn't necessarily take a bunch of money, uh, network and, and surround yourself with people who have the same type of passion and goals as you. And, I, and I'll just get on the soapbox here for a second. On this last soapbox or the end of this soapbox. <laughs> Go ahead, man. I said that and as I said it, it just is it's so, so important because we all know uh, in life and we say it all the time and you know we we sometimes we reference it to close friends and family not supporting one another and and, and not uh, you know one to you know can i get a deal or, or this that and other and they don't ask other people that you know right. you have to stay stay compassionate stay passionate about your product and you have to drown out that negative noise and you also, is, is when we talk about surrounding yourself with people who have similar goals and dreams are yours, you know, it doesn't matter if it's friends or family. If you have people that aren't supporting you uh, when it comes to your dream, it's not saying you got to eliminate those people in your life, but you most definitely need to stiff arm them. You need to Heisman Trophy them uh, with that stiff arm. You need to get them a little bit of space. Because in order for you to continue to be successful at what it is that's passionate to you, you've got to get rid of that negativity uh, and, and understand that it's not necessarily that those individuals are bad. They just don't see and understand your compassion about what it is you're doing. So you need to move them out of that environment that you're in. Uh, so many times we say we got to cut people off, maybe not cut them off. Uh, but most definitely put them on the back burner and, and, and understand that that can be difficult at times, but you got to change your environment in order for you to get what you want. 
if you want to stop smoking, you can't be in the car all the time with people to smoke. <laughs> you know, it's just that simple. Right. You, you got to change your surroundings. And you got to, you know, really stay focused on your, your dreams. So, man, great show today. Really, yes. nice, uh, we had Tiff on to talk mm -hmm. about her product. Uh, always love for Dan to give us his perspective on things because people love to hear him talk. <laughs> oh, no, I talk because I'm the host. That's just what I do. But uh, maybe he was able to, you know, let somebody else talk, uh, right. surprisingly, not me, and, and get some things uh, off their chest as well as promote a great product. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing great things from you, Tiff, with your line this year. And then uh, I'm looking forward to those calls from you. And just one last funny thing, I'll share this with you all. Uh, you know, I, I on Saturday, yesterday, I, I didn't get up as early, or I'm sorry, I got up even earlier than what I normally would. And, and the legs were a little, a little wobbly and not in the, the literal sense, but as far as just, you know, trying to get out the door and get through my routine and I was rushing and decided to change up the routine a little bit. So folks, keep your routine once you get one that works. And in the process of trying to rush through and not doing my routine like I normally do, I poured iced tea over a bowl of uh, frosted mini wheats when I was supposed to be putting it in that my, my cup to go to work with the iced tea. And I was supposed to pour milk over my cereal. <laughs> I poured iced tea over it. I will tell you Oh that. my God. <laughs> Didn't taste all that good because I still ate it because I'm crazy. You know, talk about the food. When we talk about the Friday reference. So I, I, I took as much of the tea out of the bowl as possible and took a few of the wet, wet uh, mini wheats out. But I poured some milk on and still smashed it because I'm a, few, a frugal guy when it comes to my money. I could not right. see pouring that whole bowl of cereal down the drain. Oh, uh, no, so I was going to say, uh, you, you have to sometimes sit back and laugh, but uh, I, I really like that I've been able to stay on this journey to, to, to better myself by getting up a little bit earlier. I truly feel healthier. Uh, the other challenge is you got to go to bed a little bit uh, right. earlier, too, to get up that early. So that being said, I got to get ready to go to bed, y'all. Like, uh, <laughs> But I gotta wind down. I'm not getting ready to get in the bed at 9:15. But I'm just winding down. I'm gonna watch the end of this game, and I'm gonna have me some some beans and rice uh, for an evening snack. <laughs> and hope everybody stays safe out there. All we right. got some uh, interesting weather possibly gonna hit us. I hope it misses us. But Tuesday, we're looking at anywhere from right now the the forecast saying anywhere from a half inch to about six inches. It's just oh wow. Inch. How the wind blows, so everybody stay safe and give yourself some extra time on the roads. We've seen this afternoon that wasn't the best thing. And Dan, I'll give you a chance for any final thoughts. Uh, my final thoughts are um, stay on course. I uh, see you know everybody got they uh, they plan in place and keep doing what you're doing to make yourself better. Uh, a special shout out to out there who keeping up with her diet and doing what she wanted to do and she's sharing it with everybody on Facebook. Oh, that's 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 big. Um and she making some progress. So that's good on her and and everybody else. If you got dreams, follow them. And if you got things you want to do, take those chances. Um for me personally, I'm just throwing my uh my objectives out every week. I send another email out. I I, I tend to email people what I like to do. And um to hold me accountable for what the things that I need to get done. So, and I, and again, I'll be making that text message in the morning at 6 30. Uh, <laughs> so that, uh, I stay on track with that. Other than that, I don't really have anything for anybody. Just, uh, just keep moving forward. Don't engage too much in, uh, the, uh, political whining that we see in online. It's kind of heavy right now. It'll pass. Um, let let them do what do what they need to do, but if they get out of line, check. That's that's my only thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tiff, thank you again so much for being on here. And one last thing, because you looked so beautiful this evening. I'll say this. Um, I think, not think, I know focusing on your your product, you also have took some time out and, and focused on yourself. 
uh, because you look just marvelous. Uh, Thank you, cousin. Your, your journey on uh, being healthy because that's the key. You know, I think more than anything, this pandemic uh, has shown many of us how important it is to stay on top of your personal health. Right. And part of the reason she's glowing the way she's glowing, uh, I'll say part of it because I don't know all <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> I'll say the, the compassion and the passion that she has for her uh, journey that she's on, uh, that, that focus is not just on that product. She focused on her own self personally, uh, mentally and physically in order to be the best person she could be to get this Definitely. product. Definitely. It shows you glowing like a uh, new money, baby. So can Thank you. Do what you're doing. <laughs> uh, your aura is beaming right now. And who doesn't want to be in that place? Because right now that's, that's where we all strive to get. And I see you, right. you know, on that process. So kudos to you. Thank you, cuz. I enjoyed I enjoyed every minute being on here. You know, I love y'all yeah. to death anyway. So this was definitely a good show. I really enjoyed it. And and like you said, just to touch back on you, Carl, I know you're ready to go night night. But just to <laughs> say that <laughs> just follow your dreams at the end of the day. Not saying just you gonna get up and say, you know what, I just quit and I ain't going back to work, but just just follow your dream, make a path and, and just keep it moving. And and it's definitely that's your job. That is a job itself. So mm -hmm. to anybody who just ready to get it going, just get it going and believe it and, and just keep moving. Step out on faith, but make sure you got a plan behind that faith. That's it. Plan B. <laughs> Got to be a plan B. Right. But so, I definitely enjoyed you both today. All right. Again, for being on. All right, everybody. Uh, don't it's time for to Carl to go to bed. I'm on the comments. It's probably going to be a meme of me, me and Bernie Sanders uh, going to bed. He's <laughs> <laughs> sitting on me with this skull cap on. <laughs> right. Get your little clothes you off. We've had a great time today. Everybody, uh, be safe and have a great week. Challenge yourself to, to make a change this week, folks. Um, it, like I said, the biggest step to change is you got to get out of the car. So everybody get out of the car this upcoming week um, and, and wish you all the best of luck. We really appreciate all of the support. And everybody have a great week. And thanks again to you guys for uh, uh, hanging in there with me tonight. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Good night. All right. Take good care. Night. See everybody later.